before we go too far into equilibrium, we're just going to recap the concept of reversible reactions. During a chemical reaction, what we generally see is reactants being converted into products. However, in some situations, those products can revert back into reactants. When reactants are being converted into products, we refer to that as the forward reaction. And when products are converted back into reactants, we refer to that as the reverse or back reaction. Now, if we consider what happens in terms of the rate of the forward and reverse reactions to start with, initially we have a higher concentration of our reactants and therefore a faster rate. So the reactants are being converted to products at a relatively fast rate. As that reaction proceeds, the, re the concentration of the reactants decreases and therefore the rate of that forward reaction decreases. And we can see that by the gradient of that um, curve there when we're looking at the rate over time. On the other hand, as our products are converting back into reactants, um, we're seeing that over time the concentration of products is increasing and therefore the rate for the products to convert back into reactants can also increase. So for the reverse or back process there, we see over time that the rate of that reaction increases. So initially we don't have a lot of product and therefore there isn't a lot to convert back into reactants. But as we get more products, um, the rate of conversion back into reactants can happen quicker. So we see an increase in the rate of the reverse reaction. After some time, that forward and reverse reaction will be occurring at the same rate. So that means that as reactants are converted into products, the products are converted into reactants at the same rate. And what that means is that the concentration of each is not going to change. So we're gonna end up with a constant concentration of reactants and products. So the notation that we use to represent a reversible reaction is this reversible arrow in the middle. So that shows that the reactants are turning into products and the products are turning back into reactants. Now, if the reaction is occurring in a closed system, so that means for a um, reaction involving gaseous reactants or products, it's in a sealed vessel, or an aqueous solution in which everything is in the aqueous state is, state is also called a cl closed system. So if the reaction is occurring in a closed system at constant temperature, eventually the rate of the forward and, reaction, forward and reverse reaction is going to be the same. And that's what we looked at above. And as stated above, when the rate of the forward reaction is the same as the rate of the reverse reaction, the concentration of the reactants and products becomes constant. Just a reminder that the square brackets like this means concentration. So that would read as concentration of reactants and concentration of products. So eventually we have constant, constant concentrations of both of those and that's because the forward and reverse reactions are occurring at the same rate. The point at which the concentrations remain constant is called equilibrium. So when the reverse and forward reactions are occurring at the same rate, we call that equilibrium. These graphs here illustrate the change in concentration over time of reactants and products in a reaction. I just want you to take note of how that is different to the graph that we were looking at before. So this one that we we're looking at before is looking at the rate over time. So in this situation, we are looking at how the rate of the forward and reverse reaction decreases and increases until they are the same. 
So we can see here at this point, they are the same rate. In these graphs, however, we are looking at the concentration over time. So what we can see is that as the reaction progresses, the concentration of the reactants is decreasing and the concentration of the products is increasing. Now, if this was not a reversible reaction, what we would expect to see is the concentration of the reactants decreasing until we get to zero. At that point, all of the reactants would have been converted to products. Um, however, all of the reactants or the concentration of the reactants doesn't reach zero because what we know is that some of our products are reverting back into reactants. So we can see our concentration of that increasing also. At this point here, we've got a flat line for the concentration of reactants. So that flat line means that the concentration is staying at this value. So we've got a constant concentration. And the same for the concentration of our products. That flat line means that the concentration is no longer changing. Um, now that's not to say the reaction has stopped. Both the forward and reverse reaction are still occurring. However, they're occurring at the same rate. So the concentrations have um, remained constant. Now that point where the concentrations of the reactants and products are constant is equilibrium. Now this graph is just representing the same thing. So we see a decrease in concentration of our reactants until equilibrium is reached and an increase in concentration of our products until equilibrium is reached. Now in the difference between these two situations is the position of equilibrium. So we can see in this first example that at equilibrium, we've got a higher concentration of products and a lower concentration of reactants. Whereas in this situation, we can see at equilibrium, we've got a higher concentration of reactants and a lower concentration of products. So if we just have a look at what that means. So we, again, in this situation, we've got a higher concentration of products. So if we just put a little dash there to say we've got more products and reactants at equilibrium, whereas in this one, we've got more reactants than products. So we might say that this first scenario, equilibrium is further to the right, whereas in this scenario, equilibrium is further to the left. So we'll have a little bit more of a look at the position of equilibrium in the next video.